Okay guys, um, we're in pursuit in the high country um, of a Jeep Wrangler. Now, this is a Wrangler that has an old body style, the current body style. Yet, and this, there's something uh, else. There's yet something else. It has manufacturer plates and then uh, obscured grill. That's the yet part. <laughs> so, so this is a Rubicon, I believe, because it has Rubicon wheels. Come on, get him. I want to. I want to pass. Exhaust looks strange. Okay, his headlights look pretty um, interesting. Yeah, they do look different, don't they? Like it's a different headlight, interior headlight design. Are you smelling diesel or nothing? I thought I did, but you know, I think that's just me wanting to smell diesel. Yeah, it's hard to tell. But you know, whoa! Look at these. This rock slide, dude. It's very dangerous. Shoot, that's major. Well, that that will puncture all kinds of tires. That'll puncture an engine. Because Is I'm, he accelerating? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm flat. So could he be a turbocharged potentially? Well, if he was the turbo diesel, he wouldn't have any problem up here. That's for the sure. I mean, they're also uh, uh, forecasting a turbo gasoline motor. Yeah, the uh, four cylinder. Yeah. There's also um, something hanging next to the rear axle, yeah. like a death tank. Which we've seen before. In other spy shots. I do smell a diesel, uh, a hint of diesel. We wouldn't be able to hear it because if it's the three liter, that's a pretty quiet diesel. It's quiet. So yeah, at speed, you won't hear it. Yeah, so unless he's idling next to us, which isn't going to happen, he does not want to be photographed. Definitely a large fuel tank. I could see the large fuel tank. I could also um, see the suspension. The geometry looks similar to the current Jeep. Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with Andre Smirnoff and welcome to TFL Cars Top 10 Predictions about the next generation Jeep Wrangler, which I think, what, 2018? Yeah, we think it's going to be a 2018 Jeep Wrangler and we have a lot of rumors and predictions and insider information that we want to share with you. Okay, so let's start on number 10 on this top 10 list, and that's the body on frame. Yes, yeah, so we recently got spy photography from the Rocky Mountains up in the high country, and the spy photographer actually got under, underneath, yep. on the ground, and took photos of the frame, Yep. and also the axles and suspension components. That's right, they're using the body of the current uh, Jeep Wrangler as a test mule, so we couldn't really see what they were doing. However, we know that there are other test mules running around with the new body, and we'll get to that in a minute. Absolutely, but now we have some proof that you have a frame. Yes, oh, actually yeah. you have new axles, but we'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Right? one second there on that. Yes, and you have body on frame. So one of the rumors that was out there a couple years ago about the new Wrangler is that it would be a unit body construction, and no, 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 no. Mark Allen confirmed that two years ago, I think, that there's no way they were going to even think about that. And that goes to the next question. Were they going to go to four-wheel independent suspension or front independent suspension? And we think we have the answer. And here we talk about the axles, number nine. Mm -hmm. And this spy photographer uh, confirmed that, first of all, there's a front axle. Solid front axle. Rear axle. And um, more bolts on the axle, isn't there? Yeah, it went from a 10 bolt to what looks like a 12 bolt design. Now. We know that Jeep has been perfecting the Dana 44 for years in terms of using it. So number eight, mm -hmm. aluminum. Aluminum, okay. Now, a long time ago, the big man Sergio over at FCA basically said, no, we're not going to do what Ford does by using aluminum body panels. However, we could use a little bit of it. Yeah, so basically the story was that to overhaul the factory completely to manufacture aluminum tubs and bodies would be too much. Yes. So they said, let's find a compromise. So we cannot do a whole aluminum body, but let's do body components, doors, hoods, you know, that, things like that. Exactly. So let's move on to Freedom Tops. Now, if you notice, the vehicle behind me has Freedom Top setup. However, there are actually are a couple rumors. There's one about the Freedom Tops and there's another one about the Soft Top. 
Freedom Top rumor is that they're going to make it of a lighter, sturdier material and make it easier to disassemble and reassemble. That's just a rumor. Another rumor is that with the soft tops, it's no longer going to be a setup where it's basically like a convertible that all kind of squishes together, that it's going to be panels, uh, soft top panels that are removed. So we don't have any confirmation on any of this. Hopefully when we start looking at the mules, we'll be able to figure some of this stuff out. Yeah, the, the uh, Jeep we saw that was a prototype, it was a current construction, so yeah, we couldn't and, verify that. And they had tons of stuff on there too, so it's where you couldn't really see anything anyway. And that'll probably be the case once we get our hands on the new version and with the new body, we're still going to have a hard time. Well, actually, there is something interesting. Um, now, we were talking about the old one and the new one, and it goes to number uh, six. The This is what we've heard, and it makes sense, that at the... Uh, factory in Toledo, they will still keep, they're going to stay open. They're actually going to have two production lines. They're going to have one production line building this current generation Wrangler and then another production line building the new version. And they're going to be running at the same time and progressively pare down the old vehicle mm -hmm. and up, you know, the new vehicle. So that's what we've heard recently. Yeah, the thing is, the current Jeep Wrangler is selling really well. I mean, like hotcakes. So it'd be really difficult, right, to introduce a new model and have lag where you don't have a Wrangler. Absolutely, so, yeah. So this is the information we have that they're going to build both at the same time for a while. For a while. Now, let's talk about what the differences are on the new one that we know we're pretty damn sure about. Not only that, but we've been told that this new one would be more aerodynamic. Now, what's the easiest way to make a Jeep Wrangler more aerodynamic? change the rake on the windshield. And we've noticed in some other spy photographs that we've seen of the test mule, but of the new body, that it definitely looks like it's significantly yep. pulled back. Now there's another part of that rumor, mm -hmm. which is that they'll no longer make the windshield foldable. Yep. That makes sense because nobody really does it anymore. And on top of that, you know, safety concerns and whatnot. And also, you know, that's complexity too. It, it does. So you can actually, you know, it's right now not an integral part of the strength of the vehicle. If it's permanent, then you could use that area as something that strength, strengthens the vehicle. So just keep that in mind. Okay, number four. Okay, let's go to number, number four. four. All right. Terrain management system. Yes, the terrain management system, for those of you who don't know, is being used on several different, almost all of the other Jeep products. And it is basically a system that allows you to drive off-road more effectively, especially if you're a newbie, if you're really green. It is a knob and button setup where you can go to different types of terrain, select between rock and mud and everything else, mm -hmm. and then punch in various things that you want it to do. So if you needed to handle better in the snow or if you needed to work better on rocks, you're able to do that at the control and the push buttons. But it's, it's, it's a system that is, has been perfected you know, over the past few years. And we think it's going to be at least in the automatic version of the Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, so there are a couple of things. I mean, you've seen this system recently. We've tested the Grand Cherokee yeah. off-road and it has the quadra drive 2 system where, where you can select between different modes. Uh, but also uh, other manufacturers like Toyota and the Toyota Tacoma, you know, have the uh, crawl control and terrain management system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is the 4Runner. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, basically your off-roader, you can, you can set a speed where you want to crawl at and it will go up and down mm -hmm. at that speed. So all you do is actually steer. Yeah, it works with the transmission, it works with the ABS system, and it works with the axles. and Basically, the system takes a lot of the guesswork out of what you're doing. Now, as people who enjoy going off-road, I don't really enjoy using a system like that, but if I was hanging out with somebody who's never done it before, using that type of system makes total sense. Yep, but we don't know for sure what they're gonna do. You know, this is a rumor and a prediction. Right? That's funny you mentioned rumors and predictions yes. because number three is a huge rumor and an obvious prediction, and that is for the Jeep Wrangler pickup truck. Yep, so there's been a lot of information flying around about this, mm -hmm. and in order to make the new factory, you know, retooling and all that make sense, Jeep, I don't know if they officially came out and said that. But Almost. <laughs> Almost. I mean, Sergio likes to... Uh, yeah, and, he, and uh, yeah it, it, what was basically stated was, yes, we are building a pickup truck. And from there, people have just jumped on... You oh, know, it must be a Wrangler, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and all that stuff. So, 
But it could be built in the same factory. That's it could be. Basically the, One of the theories behind that in terms of where it's going to be built is that at the Toledo plant, as the production of the current Wrangler dies down, they'll ramp it back up with production of the pickup truck. Now the question is, will that be based on the Wrangler platform from the current version or the future version? So, you know, let us know what you guys think, but uh, it's, it's an interesting question. And it's a smart thing for them to build a mid-sized pickup truck because right now that market is hot. And I'm excited about that. I mean, you can buy a like a brute conversion yeah. from aftermarket. But you're spending JKA. 70 grand or yeah. something. I mean, it's a lot of money. And nothing against brute, man. They make awesome stuff. But the reality is if you can buy something for a lot less that comes from the factory with a proper pickup truck and, you know, the setup, well, why not? You know? Yeah. So number two, transmissions. Yes, that's huge. Okay, two things. One, um, and most of you will probably agree with us, eight-speed transmission for the automatic. And if they you know, change engines, and we'll talk about that in a second, then having the eight-speed that already works with other architecture would be a smart thing to do. Now, in terms of the six-speed manual, for two rumors, one, that they're getting rid of the manual. Yes, I know, I was doing a, ah, no. Uh, or that they're going to upgrade the manual and actually make it a little bit more efficient. I think the second one makes more sense. Let's hope so, because enthusiasts love manuals. Yeah, yeah, and so does Nathan. But efficiency is very important, right? Right. You have to, cafe standards are going up. Yeah. You have to meet, continue to meet stringent uh, regulations, and number one is engine options. That's what right. What engines is the new Jeep gonna have? So we've heard a lot of rumors recently. Now, one of the more obvious ones is the V6 Eco Diesel that's currently being used in the Ram. I mean, come on. We pretty much know that that will be used in the next. I hope Jeep it Renner. fits. I hope it fits. But it, we know it matches with an eight-speed. Yes. In the truck, and it's just, it's an existing combination that can work. And it's already been tested. It's been proven, and it's something that they already have numbers on. That right there can help their cafe numbers. Secondly, there's the. Four well, I was gonna. I was gonna say you recently drove the 2.8 diesel. Yes, I did. From Europe, which is a four-cylinder diesel. Now it is not as torquey as the V6, but it still gives you a really good feel for what to expect. Having a lot of torque off the line when you're off-road is fantastic. And yeah, the one I drove was a European conversion vehicle. It was tuned also. It was totally tuned, and it was just a very different vehicle. However, I can tell you that overall, it just seems like the next logical step for the Jeep Wrangler. So, the question is, would they actually use the 2.8 liter? I'm thinking more like the Not 3 sure. liter. Yeah. Look, I'm pretty sure it fits. Guys are able to put like freaking 427s in there and you know, big, big Hemis. Yeah, 6.4 liter. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah well, I'm pretty sure it'll fit. Um, but there's also another series of rumors that recently came out. One is, of course, they're gonna be using the uh, an upgraded version of the Pentastar V6, yep. which is already being used. Um, or, or the possibility of the smaller engine. Two, two liter turbo gasoline engine. Yep. Um, it has a code name Hurricane, mm -hmm. and there's information there that it could make up to 300 horsepower. 300 horsepower, but what's really important is how much torque, and I've heard between 280 and 310. So that's kind of vague, but. For one, I'm not so sure if you want a high revving, small turbocharged engine in an off-roader. For me, it doesn't seem to jive. It does for one person, Tommy. Okay. Yeah, because he's he's a young guy who likes to go over the dunes as fast as possible. You want horsepower when you're flying up and over a dune. Yeah. But uh, no, in, in terms of uh, yeah, torque seems to make you know a little bit more sense. But you know, horsepower, who knows? It's it will definitely be lighter, and that's huge. And see, saving weight really is a win-win with a vehicle like this because your you know EPA numbers are going to improve, and your performance is going to improve. Bottom line. And off-roading as well. You want a light vehicle off-road. It's been proven that taking off weight instead of adding you know, weight is the smart thing to do for off-roading. Now, there is one final bonus component to the engine part, and that's the final part of this whole thing, and that is a hybrid. Mm. I can see that, actually. I can. A torquey electric motor. Um, and a hybrid makes sense because you have a generator to get you out of trouble if you run out of juice, right? 
We were just talking about weight saving. So the one, <laughs> the one problem about a hybrid system is that you have yeah. to shove batteries in there. Now, if you look at the current Jeep, like the one behind me, and you look at the architecture, how it's built, there's not a lot of extra space for things like batteries. And you need a lot of them in order to hold enough juice to feed to an electric motor to move this thing along, especially off-road. So, am I saying it's impossible? No, 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 not at all. But I am saying, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that they would go for the diesel and go for the hybrid. However, however, in time, maybe they will. How about make it all electric? Just forget, forget don't, don't the hybrid part. You're lucky Roman's not here because he'd be <laughs> freaking out with you saying that. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who are watching the live broadcast, we're going to be with you in just a minute. Yep. And you can uh, get more details at tflcar.com where we have all the information and latest spy shots. Oh yeah, and you're gonna see a lot more Jeep stuff coming soon. Take care. We've got snow, we've got mud, and we've got rocks. So let's see how this 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee does on our Gold Mine Hill Challenge. This Grand Cherokee also has Jeep's Quadratrack 2 system, which is just a fancy name for a, a fully automated four-wheel drive system, and it has five different drive modes. Uh, it's got auto, and then snow, sand, mud, and the most extreme, which is rock, that can only be used when you're in four-wheel low. Hopefully we don't need that for it. 